as I'm the first one in this panel, um, it will be an introduction, uh, uh, an introduction talk. And uh, yeah, well, first of all, uh, a couple of words about myself and our company. Um, we are doing product search, search recommendations, and uh, catalog navigation solutions. So as you can see, we are quite a small company, but still um, have a significant amount of queries uh, in different domains. And so this diversity issue is a challenge uh, we have to take on. Uh, so, well, I, I must confess that in my talk, there will be uh, more questions than answers. Uh, but this is a list of questions, the positions I, mm, I'd like to, to touch and uh, a bit to talk about. Um, and we'll start with the with the question: uh, What's what's actually the problem? And yeah, uh, with the diversity. So, well, if we consider ourselves uh, or our search engine as this dog, so this is a simple situation where uh, obviously no diversity is needed. So we see our user. The task is clear. Just go and fetch what you've been asked to. But um, more often, the situation can be like this: when uh, we should retrieve uh, at least two sticks in different colors, or even like this, uh, when not just well a number of different sticks are needed, but maybe you can say a tennis ball uh, can also be useful. And uh, sometimes when a query is broad, we can um, we can retrieve like a huge pile of totally different different products. And the question we'll try to to answer or at least uh, approach to is how to organize this pile uh, and how to make it useful for our users. So the first question is, uh, we are actually uh, what what are the sources? Of, the, uh, of diversity, so um, yeah. And uh, there are um, three main sources. The first one is ambiguity, uh, and it's the situation where um, same words can just bear different meanings. And the question we have to ask is what, what object uh, was, was meant when the user uh, typed in uh, this query. Uh, the second, the second source is in, in incompleteness. So, well, sometimes we can understand what what object has been meant, but there are too many um, various types of objects. For example, if we are talking about coffee machine or uh, vacuum cleaners, there are uh, different sorts of them, and uh, we may be not quite sure what what exactly kind of product the user meant. Uh, and the um, mm, Another type of this incompleteness may be that even if we understand quite clearly uh, what object was meant, uh, we may be not sure about the intent. So what about this object is um, uh, interested, is interesting for, for users. Uh, and of course, um, we um, have different people, different users. They may mean different things. And even one person, um, the same person, uh, may mean and or have uh, different tasks using the same words. So let's have a look at a Google search page uh, for a um, broad uh, query Berlina. Uh, we can see here, yeah, we know that this this word uh, can be can mean a donut. Uh, it also can describe a resident of Berlin, or also in German, it can be a, a, an adjective referring to the city of Berlin. And as we can see on this page, uh, we have these three meanings represented. Uh, the donuts, uh, uh, donuts, we have even two um, Wikipedia uh, definitions. Uh, we have uh, two sections uh, about Berlin, and one is the news section, and another is the tourist information, and also uh, one example uh, referring to the resident of Berlin. 
And in terms of intents, we can see um, dictionary definition, news section, recipes, images, uh, yeah, there's touristic information, queries and answers. Uh, so quite quite uh, wide range of different intents is coming on, only on this one page. And yeah, now the thing is that Google isn't isn't quite sure in what language uh, to communicate uh, with me. So we can see the results both in English and German. But uh, let's have a look uh, at some examples in e-commerce, and we choose um, uh, for. Yeah, like our following users journey and teachers marketplace. Uh, it's it's called Learmark Plus. It's the uh, um, a marketplace where teachers can sell the uh, materials for others teach for other teachers to buy them and to use them in, in class. Yeah, that can help conducting their lessons. So let's have a look uh, and let's try to find out what one single word, one query, like wasser or water, may mean. First of all, uh, we'll try to yeah, see what other queries uh, containing this word are uh, in our log. Uh, yeah, well, on, on, this, on this slide, we can just notice that uh, it's a really huge, really long tail. But we're interested in uh, defining or in finding out the meaning or uh, the meanings and intents of this first query. So if we have a look on the top uh, most frequent queries containing this word, uh, it can identify at least uh, four different objects, uh, four different meanings, uh, yeah, four different objects that are of interest to users, maybe for different users. They are like water cycle, physical states of water, water colors, and something uh, uh, having to do with saving water or using water yeah and um, but when we think about maintaining or automatically uh, identifying uh, these objects uh, we may um, take into consideration that there are a lot of formally different ways of expressing one same meaning so these are some examples for the physical states of water in german uh, another question we we're talking about is about intent, or in this case, a type of material, because well, for different lessons, for different teachers, maybe uh, different types are valuable. And we can see even in the top list uh, mentions of experiments or some uh, researchers' books. And um, these types of materials can also be found in uh, the filter section. We'll, we'll We'll talk about uh, about it a bit more later, uh, and there are some some other uh, important for making a choice parameters that are also can be express, uh, explicitly uh, expressed in in these queries. So this is about the type of schools, like primary schools, grades, and author or uh, as an analogy in, in some other domains like brand uh, can also be. Uh, directly demanded in, in the queries by the users. So we just had a quick look on the uh, text of queries that we can simplify in the situation, consider as reformulations. And this source of information about uh, where we can find some clarifications uh, for uh, the meaning of, of the words, it corresponds to the um, Mm, query box and query suggestion section section uh, but it's a source it's it's a tool that users use when they are uh, somehow very uh, disconnected and satisfied with the results and they just decide to uh, reformulate to ask another question another source is filters um, I, I would describe the situation a bit different when the user, uh, when users are somehow satisfied with the results, but they have, uh, they see too many noise and they just simply by clicking uh, on some facets of filters uh, want to refine the results. But the uh, uh, most maybe valuable or and even 
very difficult source of information is just the this passive interactions or so-called passive interactions of users with search results like clicks set to cards and purchases and of course every e-commerce project aims to or increase the purchases and purchase or transaction is some sign of a successful session. But yeah, we all know uh, some uh, problems with this source, like uh, this data is very biased by uh, uh, the current search engine, and it's maybe sometimes hard to uh, properly merge these at least three types of interaction interactions but still uh, we can't miss it because well it adds a lot to just uh, looking at the text of the queries and we can see um, uh, here uh, some distributions uh, of most uh, important for making a choice in this domain uh, characters so here are some subjects tags and also material types and authors and what if we had a bit more time, what we could notice that this list, this top list of uh, parameter values differ here in the search results uh, distributions from uh, the list that we saw analyzing the text of the queries, the reformulations. And there is no surprise in here because, well, uh, as we already mentioned, uh, the nature uh, of this data is, is, uh, is different. Uh, but uh, now if we um, face this well, complicated task to merge the information about the possible meanings or intents from all the available sources, the sources we may uh, have uh, well, a kind of profile with the uh, weights or uh, maybe even probabilities for a successful, for a needed result um, document uh, to have uh, this this values or these properties, uh, and yeah, let's now try to compare two search result pages in terms of diversity and also um, relevance. What we can see here that the search result on the right uh, is nearly twenty times uh, has twenty times more results. So well. We could, we could assume that the recall uh, of the right search result page is 20 times better. But if we remember some, some values that we saw on the previous slides, we can see that we uh, can notice here different authors on the left that we already mentioned and so in our distributions, that the subjects on uh, the top of the left section uh, corresponds to the list of, of school subjects that we saw there. And on the right, uh, we have four out of six results from one author or one publishing house. And uh, yeah, so well, we can say that the left page is, is more diversified uh, than the right one and the performance, some conversions um, also happen to be better uh, with the left page. So uh, after this uh, well example, let's try to propose a goal setting for uh, diversifying search results. Um, this is my proposal and uh, I uh, highlighted that uh, in, in my opinion, the goal is to, yeah, to focus on users and uh, taking account their interests. It's about understanding them. And it's also important not just to uh, aim to on the, on the first result page to provide the users with their desired products, it would be perfect, but at least to show something that looks like what they wanted to find and to purchase, for example. And now, um, well, having this in mind, uh, I'll um, look at some of the of these oppositions and try to, uh, yeah, say a couple of words about them if they are if they are real conflicts here or not. So, well, speaking about uh, this diversity versus relevance. Uh, 
we uh, should admit that relevance is important, relevance is necessary. But um, relevance is also maybe an ambiguous word because, well, we or notion, we can talk about relevance in terms of words and text relevance, or if we are lucky to be able to deconstruct the user's task, uh, the relevance to this precise task uh, may be even more important. And there may be such situations when in terms of text relevance, less relevant results can be uh, more relevant or more useful to uh, solve this uh, user task. Uh, another connected, the previous one in position, uh, is between these two strategies. Like, um, do we as a search engine have to only exploit uh, to, to provide what we were asked to? Or can we instead, or maybe not instead, uh, understand the real task and to uh, make some uh, recommendations, maybe, to provide some results that can be also useful, additionally useful, some, some, some additional results to what the user explicitly uh, asked for, or maybe can we even suggest that there are some better results, some results that uh, may be even more uh, useful, more important for user. Of course, this second strategy looks more dangerous, but um, we believe that some combination of it is also possible. Uh, there is a threat that adding personalization uh, can lead to less diversity in search results. Maybe everyone uh, among us uh, had this bad experience with personalization when we once bought something or even just click on some product and then being chased uh, eternally with these products on different sites and so on. Uh, but from our perspective, it's only a question of uh, implementation because as more information as we can get about the user, uh, we should get and we should use it to make these results that we are offering him more valuable for him. Uh, well, in our terms, in our example with the teachers, if we know, for example, that teacher uh, is a chemistry teacher and uh, uh, she works in uh, the primary school, we can eliminate or we can show more results corresponding to these parameters. But still, uh, since we can't be 100% uh, sure uh, that we know everything about the user, uh, there is still space and should be left some space for diversity and for some other uh, intense means or possible information about the user. Uh, well, uh, this is a really uh, hard question. I have uh, no direct answer to it, how to measure diversity, but we can also uh, consider a number of variants, a number of ways. First of all, taking, well, our goal setting, uh, I think it's uh, useful, it's worth considering this first result page as a one whole product and try to measure or to assess it and to judge it like one message, one answer to the user. And uh, if we do this, uh, we can uh, see that maybe uh, the diversity measurement is something similar to a recall if we have if we define already uh, one dimension or maybe some dimensions like the focus the object or intents uh, we can measure uh, how many or in what percentage the possible intents are being covered by this uh, first result page um, yeah, we only should should admit that uh, this is much more difficult for uh, with human judgments because, well, if we have one intent, uh, it's much easier for an um, assessor, for a writer uh, to understand this intent and to assess the uh, 
uh, results, but uh, it's really difficult or maybe even impossible to uh, get this impression of all possible in intents and to somehow weigh them. Yeah, uh, I have five minutes left, and uh, I'll I'll try uh, I'll try to be a little, a little more faster. Yeah. Well, uh, the last or almost the last uh, uh, th thing is about user interface. I'm not uh, an expert at all in this area, but uh, from the uh, uh, developer side, uh, I uh, would demand I would be happy if user interface could help uh, solve this same task. Like, if we already have uh, a really good, relevant, diversified search result page, it's worth um, our user interface should help us or help users to solve two main tasks. First of all, quite quickly understand where are potentially relevant results to his or her task. And secondly, for uh, some similar uh, results to highlight the differences because that's also important for uh, making a choice even where to click. And now, well, just just a couple of uh, examples. It's not to shame or to blame, uh, just to um, uh, to mark that the uh, the problem we are trying to solve is really existing and maybe uh, yeah, quite uh, relevant and timely. Uh, so, well, this is an example uh, set, set aside yeah, the relevance of the results for a car vacuum cleaner, where we can see two almost similar or identical results. And it's, uh, yeah, it's a problem to choose. Uh, well, another example with iPhones. Uh, we can understand that the iPhone 7 on the left is quite a popular and a good match for many users. But what's the difference in, in, in these two uh, precise variants? And is it worth uh, like Dublin repeating the whole information when it's only about the difference in, in the color? Uh, maybe the last, the last example, um, mm, and it uh, touches quite briefly uh, this conflict between this possible conflict between users' interest and retailers' interest, and uh, Andreas will talk more about it in detail, hopefully. But what I want to say, I as a user can get the message that uh, Amazon delivered for me that uh, Amazon really wants that I bought this first uh, item, this first model. But I don't think, and I hope you'll agree with me, that it's not a good idea. Uh, it's not a good idea, something that's important to you, to just repeat twice. Maybe there are some other ways to, well, bring, deliver this information. And so, well, the last slide, what I want to say that from our perspective, uh, search diversity is about understanding, it's about better communication, it's about taking into account minority interests. And the tricky thing here, and an interesting task is how not to damage the majorities or not to significantly damage the majorities' uh, user experience uh, while uh, taking into account this minority's interests. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, no. Thanks, Lev. Appreciate it. So that was a great talk. And Lev, thanks for um, framing the problem for us. And uh, I think you know, our three, one thing I want to point out is our, the three talks are from the e-commerce domain. But one thing I want to point out is I think this is a problem regardless of the specific domain. It's a problem in research, getting different points of view. I mentioned job search before. Um, users are increasingly uh, less expressive sometimes. You know, it's interesting. We are both solving for very expressive queries with things uh, involving natural language using uh, BERT and that kind of thing. Uh, but also users are extremely unexpressive. And sometimes I think search is playing chess with, uh, with lazy users. It's like your intelligence is competing with their laziness. And uh, I think that's, that's a fun aspect of this diversity problem. 